Hey guys and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you about how to save money on healthy eating on a budget. I know it's a big misconception that eating healthy has to be super expensive but I'm here to tell you a few of my tips and tricks that work for me to save money and still eat really healthy. I'm going to break this into a two-part series, one through five on one video and six through ten on another video just because I know I can get to talking and I don't want to make this excessively long. So I hope you find these tips useful and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want more tips like this and if you like healthy eating and nutrition also includes wellness and different stuff like that so check it out and if you like what you see then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so first when I did a little research on this topic because I do like this topic so so much I found that people who plan write grocery lists and meal plan they end up eating healthier than people who do not these are gonna be three little guidelines that are gonna be incorporated within a lot of my tips and I am going to share these with you shortly so my my first tip to eating healthy on a budget is to save money on fruits and vegetables by buying in season. You may have heard of my plate and this is kind of the overarching USDA guidelines of how to eat a healthy and balanced diet and the USDA shows that half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables. So if half of our plate needs to be fruits and vegetables then that means that we need to save money on those fruits and vegetables because it's going to be a big chunk of our grocery list and our grocery budget. So the reason our produce that's actually in season is cheaper is because usually if you see fruits and vegetables that aren't in season but they're at the store usually they're coming from way further away they have to spend a lot of money to bring those closer to us so they may have to outsource it to different countries and then ship it in so it's a lot more labor and it's a lot more time that gets spent on those fruits and vegetables coming to the store so that's just a little explanation of why it's more expensive to get stuff that's out of season a lot of the time it's very beneficial to get stuff in season and not only for price, but it's also gonna be a lot better in texture, flavor, and vitamin and mineral content. It's gonna have a lot more antioxidants in it and vitamins and minerals than if it were out of season. So it's a win-win situation. A lot of times to spot the stuff that's in season, I just look at what is cheapest in store and typically that's what's in season. If you want to look into it further, I can link to a little guide down below on what's in season uh, in winter, spring, summer, and fall. You'll also notice that produce that's out of season will wilt faster and goes bad faster. So again, it's just a good rule of thumb to get stuff that's going to A, last long, B, taste really good, have a lot of antioxidants in it, and it's gonna be cheaper for you. If there's a fruit or vegetable that you're looking for that is not in season, then you can look in the frozen food section and a lot of times you can find it for an affordable price there. And stuff that is frozen is frozen at its peak ripeness and so you're going to get a lot of vitamins and minerals from that as well. Tip number two is to search for sales. So this kind of sounds really obvious and a lot of us don't like unclipping or anything like that and you don't have to do this sometimes I use Ibotta and like the Target has an app of its own and you can save a lot of money this way um, another way is to just look at the ad of the store that you like to go to a lot like I like to go to Aldi and so I'll sometimes look at their ads before I go and their ads are either online or in store usually on the ads they will have the deals of the week so this is why it's beneficial to look at these ahead of time and then make your list based on what is on this list. Also, I want to emphasize with tip number two of looking for sales is don't just buy things because they're on sale. This can be kind of a counterintuitive thing because you want to buy stuff that's on sale, but you want to buy good stuff that's on sale. You don't want to just buy it for the sake of it being on sale if you feel like you would normally not purchase it. Then what's going to end up happening is you're going to waste it and then it's going to be a waste of money regardless. If you wouldn't normally purchase it, then think twice before you make that purchase and reevaluate what you're actually going to eat versus what you're just buying because it's affordable. Tip number three is to create a food budget. And this is not my favorite tip and it's also not 
most people's favorite tip, but it's a very beneficial thing to your overall budget and to eating healthfully on a budget. The number one thing that I like to keep in mind and that I like to tell people, there's no one right way to eat healthy on a budget. Ultimately, you want to do what works for you. So this can be getting just a pen and paper and writing down your budget. This can be tracking your budget on an app like Mint or Good Budget. These are two phone apps that you can use and you don't have to use or waste any paper or anything like that. You can also do what they call an envelope method and this just involves having your budget in cash and then putting it in different envelopes depending on category it's in. So if it's grocery shopping, utilities, other bills, rent, you put them in each in separate envelopes. Once they're in those envelopes, then throughout the month, you'll take them out as needed. And once they're gone, the money is gone and you don't spend anymore. This doesn't work quite as well in the current context of things because nowadays a lot of people use technology so it's becoming a little more obsolete. It's still a good method if it works for you. Another thing that you could do if you don't want to use a complicated app is you could just make a note on your phone in the notes section and you can just type in your overall budget. Once you go shopping you can subtract as you go. So ultimately what you want to do with a budget is look at your overall income and then subtract what you know your fixed expenses are going to be for the month and then after that look at what you have left and see what is a reasonable amount you want to spend on groceries. Then once you have that number, you just subtract every time you go to the grocery store and say you spend 40 bucks, you're gonna subtract that from your total grocery budget and so on and so forth whenever you go shopping for food. So again, I wanna really, really emphasize that the best way to do a budget is to do what works well for you and what you can stick with. It might take some trial and error. I've tried a lot of these different methods and most of them didn't work perfectly for me, but I find that the pen and paper method is the best method for me but that's just because I really really like writing things down so that's what works for me other people prefer to do a phone app or just to do an envelope method so do what works for you and tell me in the comments below what method works for you tip number four is to prepare for the week a lot of times when you don't prepare you plan to fail uh, i think that's a really true quote when it comes to budgeting and eating food on a budget this doesn't mean though that you have to be really restrictive with how you eat or how you plan your meals it just means that you need to plan for the busiest meals that you have. If your busiest meal is dinner, then you can just plan out your dinners for the week and that's all you have to do. But then you know that you know exactly what you're gonna have for dinner every day of the week or at least five days of the week and then you don't have to worry about it. And you know exactly what you're gonna be purchasing so you don't have to over purchase or under purchase. You're getting exactly what you need. You can look on Pinterest for meal planning templates and then you can just fill them out, show exactly what you are going to be eating for that week for those meals that you plan and then you can make your grocery list based off of those and then whatever else in groceries that you need. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can just use templates that you find off Pinterest. You can make your own if you desire to but I just like benefiting off of other people's creativity on Pinterest with the meal planning templates that they have because they have some really cool ones and really pretty ones and you can just put it in a little binder or you can just have it on your fridge each week and so you can look at it visually and see what you have planned for the week. Again, you can just do this for lunches if you know lunches are your busiest meal, dinners if that's the case, or breakfast if you just never have enough time for breakfast. And tip number five is repurposing leftovers. This is one of my favorite tips because I find that if I make something ahead of time in the week, then I don't want to eat the same exact thing all throughout the week. I see some meal preppers out there that eat the chicken, broccoli, rice all five days of the week or all seven days of the week and I just cannot do that. So sometimes I can be a little bit monotonous with the way I eat, but I cannot have the exact same thing every single day. So I don't know about you, but that's just not me. What I like to do is repurpose my leftovers. What I mean is if I make chicken and broccoli on Sunday mornings and I wanna have a lot of those for the week, I'll repurpose the chicken and broccoli into different things. So I'll use the chicken for a stir fry, for a salad or a soup, and I can add the broccoli to something else as well. So I can add that 
to different mixed vegetables or I can make it stir fry or a soup or a wrap. If you have a lot of random fruits in your fridge that are going to go bad soon, then repurpose them and just chop them up into little tiny pieces and put them all together and make a pretty little fruit salad. I did this last week with kiwis, mangoes, and apples and it turned out really good. I would have never made it otherwise, but I had these things sitting in my fridge and I knew they were gonna go bad pretty quickly. I just thought, how can I use all three of these things up and just make something that tastes good? If you feel like you have random everything, then look through your fridge and your pantry and see if you have at least like some sort of grain, some sort of protein, and some sort of veggie, and then you can just throw them all together. Put some sriracha or put some sauce on it and just make like a big burrito bowl out of it. That's just like my number one thing that I do all the time is if I have random stuff, I'll either A, make a sandwich out of it, B, make a wrap with it, or C, make a burrito bowl out of it. So those are tips one through five for eating healthy on a budget. I will be back in the next video for tips six through 10. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got some value out of it, please leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite tip is and what tips you use for eating healthy on a budget. I would love to hear them. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like nutrition and wellness videos. I post them every week and I'll see you in the next video.